Is a diagnosis of the present something easy to do? And what about giving a solution to the present? Is thinking about it enough? My name is Rodrigo Guim, anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. Many diagnoses of our present are made with an easiness that should raise suspicions. If you pay close attention to these diagnoses, they are geared toward producing a final judgment, a final story on the present. For example, the diagnosis is made that our present is extremely competitive, so then one can reach a solution that would be around mutual cooperation for all. So then we have to probe if in fact this is a diagnosis of the present or if it's just a will to truth and a will to power that speaks here, the gregarious instinct that speaks. And it's not only when we're talking about mutual cooperation between human beings that the gregarious instinct is speaking. The gregarious instinct as Nietzsche has shown, is not necessarily a higher instinct. There is no such thing as a universal moral ruler or measurer that would allow us to measure instinct against instinct. Just as Michel Foucault did in his work by giving us a diagnosis of the present of Western societies, doing this type of work involves a deep attention to the ever-present multiplicity of the present, and at the same time an attention to the incommensurability of the present. Because the world is not an open book, the world is not fully understandable, knowable, or translatable to any rationality. The world is only what it is due to the multiplicity of rationalities, including here rationalities that don't cooperate with each other and can cancel each other out, while you still have others that can become allies to each other. Moreover, there are worlds and worlds of activities that are not translatable into rational human languages. The human being is definitely not the center of the universe or the measure of all things. So we have to doubt any attempt to diagnose the present with a view to finalism aiming at a total arrival for a culture, for a time, or for a society. If we can diagnose, as Foucault did, that neoliberalism is the culture of the entrepreneur of oneself, or of one who is always looking to maximize oneself, seeking to become more productive, more useful, more healthy, more normal, more happy, and as an individual who acts rationally, making rational decisions between the choices that the market presents him or her, in order for us to build a resistance to this dominant mode of subjectivity, it's not enough to understand this way of life as just a language. That's why it's not enough to say that against the individualist self entrepreneur we will build a cooperative society based on mutual aid. Because it's not just about language. The neoliberal subject may well continue to reproduce itself via cooperation and mutual aid. It is even there that it often reproduces itself. Neoliberal subjects rationally attend to their rational interests and seek cooperation and mutual aid when they need it. As Foucault says, citation, Homo economicus is someone who pursues his own interests, and whose interest is such that it converges spontaneously with the interest of others. From the point of view of a theory of government, Homo economicus is the person who must be left alone. One must laisser faire. He is the subject or object of laissez-faire. He is the person who accepts reality or who responds 
systematically to modifications in the variables of the environment appears precisely as someone manageable, someone who responds systematically to systematic modifications artificially introduced into the environment. Homo economicus is someone who is eminently governable. End of citation. So see that if we take the reality of Homo economicus as part of our reflection on our actuality, it is not fitting then to think that here the solution would be to make this self entrepreneur work in cooperation with others. This in itself does not mean any change because that's already part of the condition of Homo economicus. He already works in mutual cooperation when he assesses that this is to the advantage of his own advantage and of all parties involved. But there's another perhaps more important point about this diagnosis made by Foucault that is still valid for our present. And I want to point to the fact that what Foucault is doing is a genealogy. And genealogy neither intends to be the most important reflection about the present, nor is it intended as the only possible genealogy of the present, because the very conception of genealogy is that it is a story that is never the only one, it's never the only story that can be told. It's never an assertion that this is the most complete possible history of the present. Therefore, the idea that we know the best solution of all possible solutions to the questions and issues of the present cannot be taken from any genealogy. If we want to be more active and at the same time more reflective about our present, if we want to be truly supportive of others, we have to question our own individual capacity to diagnose their problems or their solutions for others. As Foucault said, speaking for the other is one of the most dangerous things that exist. I want to thank my supporters on Patreon and on the channel that make this work possible. If you are interested in knowing more, the link will be in the description with all the courses I give and other links. Thank you all and see you next week.